there, internet. Small White here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. We are back at it with our own client this time around. No more early access. We got this beautiful background right here, and we got some spicy lists to start sharing. And I know you guys have been wanting to see my take on the Darkness archetype. This is a very cool archetype because one of the one of the funny things about it is that it got really shit on by reddit when vagar was revealed people just said he was downright unplayable before even said it was announced like people were just downgrading Vi vagar and even in the early access event people were still saying that darkness was not competitive on uh, like it, i was really impressed by the amount of people who were just like complete disregarding this because it turns out it's actually really good. <laughs> People, like really good players are using it to climb early on to diamond and it is putting in the work. And I am very happy to share my take on it. I am very confident in my version of the deck. I've been uh, playing the, the archetype quite a bit. Like I spent all night yesterday testing out and I really, really like my distribution. So I'm gonna explain why I chose the cards that I chose and what uh, the deck is trying to do and all that good stuff. So without further ado, Let's start talking, rambling, whatever. We have an archetype that is essentially a control deck that combines Vagar and Senna. The reason why we're combining these two is because both of them synergize around darkness. Darkness is a spell that you generate that is three mana slow speed and initially deals two to an enemy. The way this deck works, what's really fun about this control deck is that your units uh, amongst other things, but specifically, more than anything, your units are there to slowly but surely build up this removal, right? Darkness uh, initially is a little bit underwhelming, but once you start reducing the cost and start empowering the damage output, it becomes amazing. And when you have Senna on the board, you're able to go for it at fast speed. And then once you level up Vagar, you can uh, go with it directly to the opposing Nexus. And that's generally how we win games. We burn them with darkness with leveled up Vagar, even though there are other ways to win matches ultimately. In order to do this, we have a couple of copies of Rekindler to make sure that no matter how much the game drags out, we are able to effectively out value the opponent and bring in our champions. This deck is much stronger with uh, either both or one of the champions on the board. Because Vagar, the longer he stays on the board, the more powerful he will be making darkness. As every round starts, you will be able to grant your darkness everywhere one extra damage. And when it comes to Senna, Senna just essentially allows you to generate infinite darkness because whenever you attack with her you're creating a darkness and this just allows you to never run out of gas so one of the weaknesses with a deck like this is uh being outpaced early on but because we have access to shadow owls we can resort to certain heal effects that can allow us to stomp down on aggro and the cool thing is that other control decks can be a little bit scary but the ability to burn them with darkness can be really really overwhelming for them and we have access to cards like minimorph which allow us to counter other you know like really greedy control lists like based on karma or anivia etc etc we have the ability to deal with big threats and we have the ability to deal with spread out board states as well even though really i'd say like aggressive mid-range demacia based with rally effects and such that's one of the scariest matchups for this deck but generally speaking this archetype while it seems slow it really does actually you know pick up the pace and put in the work we're playing a full set of stilted rope maker i really like this four drop i've seen a lot of people not run it i believe it is uh, i consider it a staple because there is a big difference between a three mana darkness and a two mana darkness two mana darkness especially in the late game uh with it casting one less you are uh, able to chain a bunch of them otherwise they just eat up your mana right and playing multiple stilted rope makers and having your darkness be one or zero mana is just absolutely outstanding it allows you to outpay uh, even opposing darkness uh, decks in a mirror match. Uh, I've seen people disregard this four drop, but I believe it is amazing and it has just enough. The three four stat line for four mana seems bad, but it is actually really good. It allows you to trade into three threes and three twos and survive the exchange. It is just good enough to take sponge hits and get value. You, you will get value out of this body and that little bit of extra power that you could have had or a, a bit more of a thicker stat line is going to make it so that your darkness is actually able to be chained and that's very very important we also have when it comes to the early game we have a, a full set of pokey stick and a couple of copies of vile feast i don't think you need to run a third vile feast because you already have five ping effects at two mana 
and that tends to be more than enough. Unless you're facing only aggro, then you can perhaps add in some healing effects here and there, which is something that's really cool about this archetype is depending on what you're running into a ladder, like if you're facing a lot of aggressive decks, you can tweak it a little bit and add in more healing. If you're running into more control, you can tweak it and take out some more healing and add in more control options, even though this version is really designed to win the mirror and to beat up uh, other variants of decks that are a bit it's a bit slower because we have strong value generators not only do we have a couple of rekindlers but we also have a one-off of catalog of regrets this card really does give us the edge in the mirror match because once we play this we get to essentially get a free spell every round and that allows us to drown the opponent in value and make sure that we always have a way to deal with their own champions and essentially just Again, drown them in value. Just reach a point in which they have no cards left, and we have a lot of them. Because this card will get you there, and I really like it as a one-off. Stress Defense is uh, pretty amazing, because it allows us just to completely nullify an attacker and uh, reduce its uh, you know, power output. This, alongside Mini Morph, allows us to deal with like big elusives, for example, or just huge-ass threats like Scion, and uh, shut them down for a turn, or even just wipe them out. And then we have uh, naturally the Dark, Bo the Dark Bulb Acolyte and the Twisted Catalyzer alongside the Solar Sentinel as our early game units. I don't like the Conchologist in a uh, Bandal City Shadow Isles deck because if you look at it, if you look at the three mana spells that we have with this region combination, they're not that great. There's a lot of bad ones. You know, Fresh Offerings, Gluttony, Splinter Soul, Sap Magic, Passage Unearned. There's just a lot of really bad options. I mean, there's more than just three mana. You have other options here, right? But you have like Sapling Toss, Entrapment. I, I just don't like this region combination for a card like Conchologist. And I think it's, it's a little bit overrated as of right now because uh, it's deceptive. It makes you think that you're getting more value out of it than you actually are. Instead, we're playing Otterpus, which I believe is the best one drop in the game. Allows us to disrupt any sort of matchup, especially if we hit a spell and make it cost plus two. And it gives us very valuable information that can allow us to anticipate certain plays and sequence a little bit better and without having to take too big of a risk. Sometimes when you go for this and you only hit one unit, you know that the one card, sorry, you know the rest of their hand is comprised of champions. It's also very, very valuable information because all of a sudden you know what their entire hand is comprised of which is really important. And I love this one drop, and I think it is just absolutely outstanding, and I definitely prefer it over something like Conchala just in a build like this. We have a one-off of Miss Call to preserve our champions because this deck really needs the champions to get going. Uh, and Miss Call can be a great way to kind of like, it's kind of like a, a deny in a way for like a, a heavy investment from the opponent to remove either Vagar or Senna. You can play Miss Call and get them back. Can even work even better with the likes of the Rekindler. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the deckless right there. When it comes to the mulligans, keep your early curve. And if you draw into one of your champions, don't mulligan them away. This deck is significantly stronger if you're able to curve out into your champions, especially Senna, but also Vagar to pump up the darkness in case you're not able to apply pressure with the Twisted uh, Catalyzer instead. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the build. So that's essentially all I got to say. Really fun deck to play. Very difficult though. One of the most difficult control decks out there to pilot because there's a lot of decision making, especially regarding darkness. And hopefully today, today's gameplay will help you uh, a little bit, you know, in regards to how I opt to uh, sequence with this uh, deck as I have some really solid games, even though some of them can be a bit long, but I think you guys will enjoy it. And I am going to stop talking. Pretty long deck tech, but I wanted to clarify the options that I went for and uh, why my deck looked good. Because there's, there's like a lot of different takes on this deck, right? And uh, I, I feel like this one is... It's very neat, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, because this archetype is fun as hell to play, and it's really powerful, so I love Vagar's voice lines, I think Senna, Senna has a lot of potential deck building wise, like, you can also play her with PNZ, you can play her with Bilgewater, you can make a Go Hard deck with her, with Kegs as well, because Kegs do actually contribute to her level up as of right now, not sure if that's a bug or not, but there's a lot going on for Senna. And yeah, I just, I love this archetype. And I think a lot of you have been looking forward to it as well. So hopefully you enjoy it. Try it out yourselves. And hopefully you enjoy the games. And that's all I gotta say. I'm a soul day. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. I do post a new deck list every single day. Seraph is incoming tomorrow. So if you're excited about that. And yeah, have a good one. Enjoy the matches. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, here we go. Ezreal Draven will be our first opponent i'm gonna go ahead I, I think with this deck you always want to generally you always want to keep your champions 
because the deck revolves around Senna and Vagar so much that uh, not drawing them is a bit of an issue. I'm actually thinking about keeping the Vile Feast here as well. But I'm going to mulligan it away. I mean, Thorns of the Rose is something that we could hit. Otherwise, I'm not sure if it's worth it. I mean, it's very likely to have an answer for this, so I'm gonna play you. <laughs> yeah. Now they can't, like, Arachnus and Triantic is down at the same time, so... Give me your valley's creatures of doom! I'm gonna play Twisted Catalyzer. Mystic Shack would be a thing. Or a get excited that gets his card advantage. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I cannot complain about that. Best job. This <laughs> adorable. We gotta take the head here. We're gonna get, get Vagar in on the board as early as we can because uh, we want to start pumping up the darkness. So now we have the ability to knock out Draven. <laughs> what did he, he discard the axe? I don't know, what did he discard? Oh yeah. Draven down. Draven 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 I love the Dark Bolt backlight. That's an interesting stun. I mean, he's pumping up that Tribune probably later, I assume, to pretty crazy levels, so... We gotta, we gotta be wary of that, yeah. That's a big hit. I am here until I am no more. We strike now! I'm gonna go for the darkness here. I think we have something on that case. Let us cast shadows. We play Rekindler now, and we get to pump up this darkness to try to level up Vagar here. Rekindler also gives us another body to block with, so this is looking, it's looking all right. We haven't been able to to enable Senna yet, but. I'm gonna go with this. Okay. 
Very nice. I'm gonna attack with Senna immediately. Um, not only for the damage that I'm getting in here, but also just to generate the darkness. We're gonna play Vagar. Pump up our darkness as our opponent has, you know, spent most of the resources. We're not really particularly worried. Now I'm just gonna dark your face. Alright. They're out of gas! Vagar! Time to finish it, my boy! I'm gonna play Senna and have this enabled at fast speed so that pretty much uh, there's nothing my opponent can really do. Yeah, because we can just do this. And if something weird happened, I could generate another darkness with Senna. And we knock him out. Booyah! Beautiful. Beautiful. Taking out my nemesis. An Ezreal Draven. Very nice. Yeah, I, this archetype is feeling really, really clean. And the fact that I'm able to, like, especially because I'm, I'm technically, I'm, a, I'm an archetype that really relies heavily on, on uh, the champions taking on the board, right? So facing a, a very, like, Ezreal Draven is perhaps one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the game, at just removing units, especially, like, mid-sized units, like Vagar and Senna represent. So being able to just beat that down, just sheer, through sheer value, is very, very neat. And that's a matchup that I hadn't really tested yet, and I'm really happy with the results. So good start to the video. Round two. What are ya? Guardia. Playing Fizz, Nami. This is one of, the, if not the best deck for the expansion, for sure. Like, Nami is really, really, really strong. I feel like keeping the Withering Whale and the Pokey Stick. I'm gonna keep this entire hand. It's um, it's got a lot of pings, which is important here. Surprise! They're playing Shell Shocker. I mean, I'm definitely gonna block into this. <laughs> Okay, so the rest of his hand is purely champions. Good to know. Now they play good challenges. We can just like actually just knock it out. He probably wants to carry over. Oh, he doesn't want to carry over the mana. Okay. 
I thought he would want to carry over the mana to level up. Nah, man. I just I, I love this I love this little guy. Yeah, an even bigger weapon. Okay. I mean I can always just kill it with this, so sure. Uh, line him up. Not something I was expecting, but I mean. Stilted Robe Maker uh, puts in the work here. He's completely hairless. Remarkable. I'm gonna attack him because this this round I want to play this. I'm gonna pokey stick this uh, this kelp maiden. We have many morph to counter fizz potentially as well. I like Senna though. I will find the moonstone. I will save my people. Embrace the current or be swept away. Long road behind, long road ahead. I need to keep this Otterpus alive because as long as he's casting spells, the buffs will be going will be going onto Otterpus. Ride to the 
I'm gonna drop the Solari Sentinel now. I'm gonna get another darkness here. Concentrated forgiveness. Keep your distance. I have mini morph, so I'm, I'm safe. Let's get it. Keep your distance. Bit a bit a bit a bit. <laughs> he got the fleety one. So that's good. He, he did get the information on the mini morph here. And uh, we're low, right? But we're going to get some health back with the Ixali Sentinel. And we've got that mini morph in hand. This is why I play too many morphs, man. Like, mini morph is way too good. Uh, it, it's a very nice fail safe. Follow my song to save your armor. Darkness and light. I ain't afraid. The light remains. Life is cyclical. Darkness. Get some card draw there as well, which is really neat. We got protection against the Fizz attack to try to finish us off. My quest is dangerous, but I will see it through. I'm gonna try to darkness Fizz because he has one card left in hand. And uh, it has to be, I mean, I, I assume it's a spell, but I, I force him to play that spell now. It could also be another Fizz, but if that if it's another Fizz, then I know it's another Fizz, because he's just, we just completely outvalued him. Uh, this, this catalog of secrets put in the, put in the work. Like, I really, really like this card as a one-off in, in Senna, v, uh, Vagar, Darkness. In the mirror, it also gives me the edge, because I just have so much more value than my opponent. Like, this is like an investment for one turn. Yeah, it was another Fizz. I mean, we, we, we had a hint at that. Um, yeah, I don't even need to mini morph anymore. I don't even need to mini morph anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Got him! On to the next one. Nice. Nice. 
Now I need a poop break. Don't, don't put that in the video. <laughs> Alright, Gangplank Sejuani. Let's see how we fare against this deck. I like the Otter Puss a lot. Uh, I'm always going to keep Vagar in the opener. Twisted Catalyzer is also really neat. Yeah, I think this hand is solid. I think this hand is solid. Well, now we know what they're trying to do. If they open attack with this, we're definitely going to try to block into it. Now, I could play Dark Bull back a light. Should probably just start building up these. Is our crystals combined? <laughs> Say your farewells. I'm gonna play Darkness now to just get rid of this monkey idol. <laughs> well, good to know that I play Withering Will, not Withering Mist. <laughs> For God, I listen. This character. I knew nothing about him, but I just I, I love him. And now he's dead. I like the stress defense. We have health gain as well. We're not doing too bad. We have two options of play here. What's the best one? I mean, just playing Rekindler limits our... Hmm. How vulnerable are we to a Gangplank? We can always just stress defense and um, and withering will potentially. One candle for every sun. I'm gonna rekindle into Vagar. Game plank is like the worst thing, but he has four cards in hand. Maybe he doesn't have it. I'm not green. There we My go. Friends, there we go. Very nice. We're obviously not gonna attack into a, a powder monkey. 
He could, however, he could have the, um, the harpoon. Yeah. We gotta knock that out. Just mitigate as much damage as we can. All right. We took a lot of damage. Um, I would love to see a, another withering will, some form of healing here, because ah, we're we're barely, we're just about to win here. So close yet so far. We have many more. I mean, we have ways to survive. Again, doing everything I can. Okay, there's a vile feast. I was waiting for his. I love Vagar's like wind quotes. Like when, the one he starts coughing when he went, uh, That's my favorite. But he got he got mini morphed. He was no longer himself at the end. Oh man, that was that was okay. That was a game. That oh my god, it's already forty five minutes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> These games are so long, dude. These games are so long. Oh my lord, that this arc time is so damn fun. We got to showcase pretty much everything in the deck. We showcased the catalog of secrets. We showcased uh, our early game, our disruption. We showcased Miscall in that game as well. 
we showcased Senna, uh, Ixtali Sentinel, the re like everything. Everything in this deck like carried its weight. And even though it's, it was only three games, because we are a control deck, naturally our games are going to be a little bit slower. But uh, we went 3-0 and oh, and uh, we climbed a little bit. So hell yeah. Love me some darkness. Really, really big fan of this archetype, man. It's super fun. And I just love how Reddit was just like shitting on Vagar. Just all oh, Vagar is just unplayable, comparing him to Azir, saying that he's just completely unviable. Darkness was way too slow. And then people kept saying that it was bad. And, and I, I, but I, you know, the, the pro players that I follow on Twitter are just like really freaking out over this archetype. It's just like, okay. Maybe, maybe Reddit reaches conclusions a little bit too often sometimes because god damn. It felt great. Like, I was playing this yesterday night, and I was just winning every single game. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. I was playing a lot of normal because I, I, I was playtesting, but it's, it's amazing. And there's several different ways to build it. Really, really happy with this archetype. It's super fun to play. My god, it's so fun. I, I, it just, I, I didn't realize it had been 45 minutes. It's passed so fast. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed this daily content. Tomorrow we'll be back at it. I'm going to be trying to build some Seraph for tomorrow. I know a lot of you want to see that. And hopefully you guys liked today's video. And that's pretty much it. Have a soul day. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Interact content. I do post a new deck every single day. And I do rap outros and stuff as well. Love ya. <laughs> see you around.